Hello, I'm Colin Daly of Campbell Scientific in Logan, Utah. In this video, we'll introduce you to our app for mobile devices, LoggerLink. LoggerLink lets you connect your Campbell Scientific data loggers that have IP connections. Those data loggers are specifically the CR1000, 3000, and CR800 and 200 series data loggers. With LoggerLink, you can view real-time data, graph historical data, set variables and toggle ports, check important status information about the health of the data logger, send programs, set the clock, collect data, and manage files. Tyler Meekum of our office will now walk you through the basics of using LoggerLink. You'll see that our LoggerLink application has been installed. We simply tap on the icon and that will launch the application for us. When the application first launches, you will see a Getting Started help page, which describes some of the basic settings and steps that you need to go through in order to configure your data logger communication. To begin with, we'll tap on the plus button in the upper right hand side of the screen. Now this brings us to the data logger setup, which presents us with some of the basic settings that we need to configure in order to communicate with our data logger. You can enter these settings manually or you can do discovery by simply tapping on the magnifying glass on the right. Now on our network we currently have these three devices available. I'm going to tap on this weather station device and you'll see that it then populates all of these settings automatically for me. Now on this particular data logger, there is currently security set up, so we will enter the security code, which is one. Now we're all done setting up this data logger. We simply tap on the save button in the upper right, and we're done. We've now configured all of the settings that we need to in order to communicate with this data logger. If you need to change these settings, again, you can tap on the blue disclosure button on the right, which will bring you into these settings where you can view them or you can edit them. We're going to connect to this data logger by tapping on the connect button at the bottom right. You then see some information about how the connection is being established and the updating of table definitions. And then it brings us into our current tab, which shows us some of the current information about our data logger. We're currently monitoring the minute table. We're going to tap on the configure button in the upper right, which lets us select the table that we want to be displaying. I'm going to tap on the public button to display the public table. The public table is populating every second and there are some values in here that are settable. So I want to demonstrate for you how we can set a Boolean value. You simply tap on the toggle button and it will give you a little indication saying that it's setting that value. You can also set floats or strings or long variables. We'll tap on, this, on the settable float and we'll change this to 3.14. And then tap on the set button in the upper right and you can see that that variable was now changed to 3.14. If you look at the bottom of the application you'll see that we have several tabs available that you can tap on to display particular information. We're going to tap on the status tab now which displays the health information about our data log. The status tab is broken into sections. The first section that we see is the program info section. From here you can see which program is currently running in your data logger, when the program was started, or you can tap on the send program button to send a new program to your data logger. We also have a detailed data logger information section, which gives you critical information about the running state of your data logger. You can see memory information, how much is still available, panel temperatures. Next we have the error section which will display errors specific to your data logger. 
These errors can be reset at any time from this display. You also see battery information. You can see the current battery or the lithium battery voltages. Card information is also presented so you can see how many bytes are still available and the status of the card. Lastly, the clock information is presented, which shows your current iOS device's system time as well as the data logger's current time. This time can be set by tapping on the set time button, which presents you with a confirmation dialog. This lets you see what you're actually going to be setting your data logger clock to. Simply tap on the set clock button to set the clock of your data logger. You now see that those times are synchronized. Next we're going to tap on the historic tab, which is where we go to view historic information from our data logger. Here we're monitoring the data logger's second table. You can see that data coming into our graph. At the top you can also see a table option which you can tap on to view the same information in a tabular format. Tap it back on the graph if you want to go back to the graph view. We'll now select the Collect Data tab. Here you will see all of the data logger tables that are available for collection. Here we've got the day, hour, and minute tables selected, and I'm going to, to select the All Data option, which will collect all the data available in those three tables. We then tap on the collect button in the upper right and it will bring us to a progress dialog which shows us the progress of this data file collection. So here we can see that the day and hour tables are finished and we're just going to wait here while the minute table finishes up. Okay, so there we are, all three tables have finished collecting and we can see that the day collected 10 records the hour table collected 236 records, and the minute table collected 1,440 records. We're going to look at the, the hour table here by simply tapping on this disclosure button. It then brings us to a simple file viewer which lets us scroll through and see all of the data that's been collected. From here you can also tap on this action button in the upper right. which presents you with some actions that you can perform on this file. You can delete this file, you can attach this file to an email, or you can open this file in an external application such as Dropbox. We're going to tap on the cancel button. We will go back to our data collection and now we're done collecting so we just tap on the done button and it brings us back to the collect data screen. From here we're going to go to the more tab. Now the More tab presents the remaining tabs that are available to us. We're going to start by tapping on the Files option, which displays all the file information associated with this data logger. We can see the currently running program. We can also see all of the drives that are available to this data logger. This particular data logger has a CPU drive, a card drive, and a user drive. And you can see some of the basic information about how big these drives are and the space that's available on them. I'm going to select the CPU drive. And here we see a list of the files available. This drive only has one program file on it. So you can select that file. And then again, we'll go to the action button in the upper right. If you tap that, you'll see all of the options that are available for that file. I'm going to select the Get File option. You can see that it downloaded that file now to my device. And then tap Done. Then we're brought back here. If you tap back on the Drives button, it brings you back to your drives, and you can you can go into other drives. You can format the drives, delete files, send files. There's lots of options available to us here. So we're going to go back to the More and look at the Settings. So here you see all of the data logger settings that are available to you. 
the data logger has a wide variety of settings that can be changed. If you're unfamiliar with a particular setting, you can simply tap on the I button and it will bring you into a detailed help section about that particular setting. Back on the settings, and here you are. You can tap on the value, modify the value, do whatever you need to from here. And you can apply those back to the data logger. The logger link application also has a full help system available. Here you can see the getting started page that we saw when our application first launched. We also have detailed help about setting up and configuring your data logger connection. There's also help for each of the screens that are available to us. The current tab, the status tab, the historic tab, each of those have a detailed help section that will help you to be able to configure and set up the application to meet your needs. So we're going to go back to the, to the More tab and you'll see a Disconnect button available. By tapping on this, we're able to disconnect from our data logger and tap on Disconnect and it brings you back to your data logger screen where you can add more data loggers or edit this existing data logger. Thanks Tyler. Campbell Scientific's LoggerLink app will run on iOS version 4 or later or Android 2.2 and later. Please contact a Campbell Scientific Application Engineer to discuss your application and for answers about LoggerLink.